Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of another bourbon show. Uh, tonight we're going to be drinking another uh, sample that Ryan provided. Uh, we're going to be drinking some Pinhook, their high proof bourbon, their 2021 high proof bourbon, also known as Bourbon Heist, because Pinhook names all of their bottles after horses that competed in the Kentucky Derby. Derby. So uh, Pinhook is a really, really neat distillery. Um, I have not tried their high, high proof bourbon before, um, but they're a cool company. They are doing a vertical series uh, starting with four years and they're going up to a nine year. Uh, so they've released their four year bourbon, their five year bourbon and their six year bourbon. So we've still got seven, eight and nine that are gonna come out one year after each other. But they also do a rye, a high, a high rye bourbon and a high proof bourbon. And uh, the high proof bourbon is full proof. It is a uh, 75% corn mash bill, 15% rye and 10% malted barley. Uh, Ryan, you said this comes in at like 120 proof. Is that right? Yeah, it's 119.9. All right, so that's oh, yeah, right underneath. damn close to 120. As close yeah. as you'll get, dude. As close as you'll get. <laughs> as close. My, my math's right. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen things labeled as 0.5 before. All right. Oh, I guess I've never seen two decimals though, or have I? Stag Junior. They did a. They did two decimals. The one that you shared with us. They went out to the hundredth spot. So, so you're wrong, Ryan. You're fucking wrong. I'm shocked. <laughs> so where did you acquire this from, Ryan? And let's get uh, Stephen to do a label rating on it, too. This was a Christmas gift from a coworker. So okay. um, I think uh, there's a little. Uh, I don't know if you could see like the rip or part of the label came off. Um, I don't know if it was discounted or something. I don't think it was, but uh, there was a little damage. <laughs> damage to the label that's going to come up in my review for sure yeah, yeah. don't don't take that into account steven that's not that's not pin hooks fault fault well right off the bat i think that um you know it's got a horse and jockey on it and i'm just skeptical that that could work on a bourbon bottle to be honest <laughs> i just i don't see it happening but um i think that it looks it looks really nice um it everything look i i think a lot of bourbon bottles would have made the horse and jockey it it would have just been that it would have been pin hook but we were talking when when i first got online tonight about that background and i think that background looks nice it looks like you know so some of the decoration that would be on a horse or something like that they did they used that white space on it and i just think it all comes together really well to really stand out on the shelf and just it be a nice looking bottle that doesn't look like much else out there. So I'm going to give it an eight because I, I like it quite a bit, but I don't put it in the upper echelon of like, you know, some of the stuff I've given nines or tens to uh, talking about, because to me, it's not really my taste at the same time, but I think it looks really nice. Yeah. And I want to throw out there that, that uh, the pattern that they use, uh, they use that, like they're not all the light, purple and white like that but the pattern as far as like the checkered or whatever you want to call it i'm pretty sure that that's pulled straight off of like the numbers that jockeys wear on their chest right so it like just continues that theme of um of the the jockey and the which is really cool but even if they even if it had no thematic reason for it just having some extra we talk about so much how some of these labels are just plain white or something or like just emboss it a little bit do something like use that extra white space stand it on the shelf because a ton of people are going to decide to buy or not buy your bottle based on how that bottle looks and if it just looks plain you're you're setting yourself up for a failure if you're a smaller just when i say smaller distillery i'm not saying pinnacle is small i'm just saying compared to like a jim beam of the world or something like that mm -hmm. That already has that name name value. That already has the name. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. people are going to care about your label. If you're not the name, people are going to care about the label. Mm -hmm. 
So if you had never heard of Pinhook and were walk, walking down the bourbon or whiskey aisle, this is for both of you guys, and you didn't, you knew nothing about Pinhook, is this one that you might potentially grab based solely on the label? I don't know that I would. Like I said, it's not really my taste, to be honest. However, I'm still giving it an eight because whether or not I'd pick it up, I'm aware of it because yeah. of I remember having seen it. Where some of these bottles, sometimes you're like, do they have Wilderness Trail there? I'm not sure. You know, this I think stands out. Yeah. I really like the the purple wax on the top. Yeah. So yeah, I would <laughs> based on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Pinhook, so Pinhook. Pinhook uses wax on all of their bottles and they do tip it like they they dunk that bottle all the way down to like the whole neck is covered in uh, wax pretty much every bottle I've ever seen. So now I've never seen it like with uh, makers where it's like drizzling down the whole bottle too. I've never seen that. So it might be like a mechanical process that they go through the wax, but it still it looks cool. very exact on that bottle that Ryan's got. Yeah. It looks like there's like an in cutoff point. Like if you told me that that was like foil and that part wasn't actually wax, I believe you. It, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely not like a perfect circle. It's kind of goes down a little bit and comes back up. So unless that's how they want it to look, which I mean, it could be, but yeah, it's but there's not no a drop. Circle, so it makes me think that it's, no. it's held at a consistent angle throughout a conveyor line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to say about the the label, Stephen or Ryan? Uh, anything you want to say about the label, the the distillery, anything? Pretty sure the cork is artificial. Oh, I can Not tell really. you from right seem, here, it's yeah. artificial. <laughs> yeah. The shape. So, on but that like thing. right up, right above it, it's it's actual wood. So it's like it's kind of. I don't know if you can see that at all. This is real wood yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah. What species of wood, Ryan? Oh, that's that's uh, that's oak. Okay, uh, definitely yeah. amphibian, dude. That's bir that's birch wood right there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what do you say we give it a taste and see what we think of the nose and the sure. palate and all that horse shit? Look like ash to <laughs> me, for the record, by the way. But we'll continue. <laughs> yeah, you definitely get the the proof on the nose. Oh yeah. But it's but not in a bad way. Like it's like you you know you're getting ready to to drink some high proof bourbon, but it's got some sweetness to it. It's got a I think it's got a lot of sweetness to it and citrus. Yeah, yes. I feel like a little Granny Smith apple to it. Nice color. Yeah. Well, it's got a taste, or I'm sorry, a nose that makes me want to drink it. It smells like I get some raspberry from it too when I breathe real deep. I've been fighting a sinus infection for no shit two plus weeks now, so I can't <laughs> breathe real deep, or I will start coughing, and I might not stop coughing for the next thirty minutes. The world has been fighting a sinus infection for two years now, Dan. We don't we don't That's care. Allegedly, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I'm just saying why I'm not going to take a deep breath to try to get the fucking blueberries that you're picking up. Raspberries, but <laughs> Jesus. Damn. I know. I know. Snazberries. <laughs> 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 but it really does, really does have a, a nose that makes me want to drink it. I definitely get some like uh clove cigarette smell to it back in my <laughs> uh, early college, but there is some clove. Oh, I like that a lot. I like it a lot. Yeah, I'm getting like multiple types of fruit. And honey. And honey. The honey, the, yeah, the yeah. sweetness is definitely a honey sweetness. It's not a caramel. It's not a toffee. It's definitely a honey sweetness. That's got a hug, too. It does. <laughs> and it's warm. It warms your belly. A the lot of cinnamon. like... Cinnamon, honey, butterscotch is what I get on the finish. This is a cold winter night bourbon. A cold winter night's bullshit high west product name. <laughs> so that sounded like, dude. Love you, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, this this keep this will keep you warm in the wintertime. This is probably oh, yeah. since Stag Junior, this is probably the spiciest meatball we've had, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You can't disagree after you started having hiccups. No, I can't. I can't. I can't at all. I mean, it like it is really coating the inside of the glass like crazy, crazy legs on this thing. Yeah. And I had mine. I was storing the vial in my basement. So when I first take a sip, it's like this really kind of cold sensation so it's pretty crazy to take a sips of this and it starts out like really cool and refreshing when it first hits my lips and then by the time the finish is there just my whole face is on fire <laughs> <laughs> man my yeah Woo. i feel that the whole way <laughs> the whole way like am i wrong you guys like it a lot too or my initial reaction is I like it. There's a lot of complexity, but I need more time with it because I feel like a few sips in, I have not had all it has to offer. There's so many notes to it. Yeah, but I'm asking, do you like it? You son of a bitch. I think it's <laughs> not asking bite. you to pick out the fucking Caramel. every aspect of the palate. I'm saying thumbs up thumbs down sideways at this moment like to me yeah, this is and like I'm going two sideways. giant thumbs up i'm going sideways, sideways? oh yeah. you son of a bitch. paul giamatti uh thomas hayden church thomas hayden church thank you forgot his name man you're always there for me when i can't think of thomas hayden church's name you're always there dude i love you dude i don't who's even the, know who that is who's the supporting female cast i don't i don't even remember sandra oh let's go virginia oh, yeah. madsen come on god damn it's peeling licks are right off the bone. <sighs> God, we're so cool, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ! I like Thomas Hayden Church though. He seems I I would drink bourbon with that guy. Who is that? Who is it? He's, I wasn't paying uh, attention when you talk. You were talking about him a second ago. He's a he's an actor. He was like Sandman and Spider Man three with Tobey Maguire. Um, you know, Dan. he was he was the guidance counselor in Easy A. Oh my god! Uh, now we're getting into stuff deeps. Dan has definitely seen. Yeah. Um. He was Jesus. another thing he was in was uh Sideways. Yeah. Have you ever have seen? Ever seen ever him seen, in my life? Have you ever seen Sideways, Dan? No. Great. Oh, and, fucking he was uh in the Muppets. He was Lowell. Okay. From Wings. Yeah. Back then, because I think that movie came out in like oh four, oh five. Nobody was drinking Pinot Noir. That movie came out, everybody was drinking Pinot Noir. And it was just a small indie movie. But what that movie did for Pinot Noir is insane. If you're like, look at that. I even remembered his name from a shitty sitcom in the early 90s, probably. He's definitely aged a lot better because he kind of looked like a crackhead back then. Um, and he kind of oh, talked was a, like he a was a hick. Yeah, he talked like a hick. Yeah, like he was, yeah, like this was a Minnesota girl. sitcom or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, that guy's awesome. I never would have known his name, though. I guess it's cool to look like somebody, right? You know. Not if that person's fucking ugly, dude. <laughs> it's not cool at all. It's directly related to how hot they are. Hey, dude, you he look was... exactly like Dustin Diamond. <laughs> Fuck, man. Who takes that as a compliment? I get I get Robert Bortuzzo a lot when I'm down in St. Louis. Yeah. I can see that. I get that, yeah. I get that a lot. You look like Dustin well, Diamond present day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably still fatter than me. Rotting in there. <laughs> you know who I get pretty regularly on fucking Ron, TikTok? Ron Jeremy? No. That would that would be worse. But you get Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven? I could I thought, see I that. Thought I could, you said that before. I could see that. But since I've been gaining weight especially, that fucking comedian, uh Kreischer. 
Burt Kreischer. Burt Kreischer. Oh, see, I don't think you. I you, you don't know look what? anything. You told me that before. I don't think you look anything like him. I get like people make like comment, like especially assholes comment that on fucking TikTok. You look nothing like. They don't know anybody else with a beard. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Who did I used to get? I I love that whole like fat shaming thing that him and Tom Segura, they told their fans like, make us feel bad for being fat, like on social everywhere you can. Mm -hmm. And they both like lost a lot of weight. I I think Tom's kept it off, but Bert's still pretty fat. But people went off the deep end with Bert. Like they were on talk shows like, oh, you know, I'm motivated by Bert Chrysler. They would like butcher his name and call him the most racist comedian ever. And he's just (laughs) taking everything. (laughs) He's fat. He's racist. Bert Kreischer. Yeah. <laughs> and he seems, he's probably the nicest guy in the world. Like when he gets done with a set, he drinks with everybody. Does he? And yeah. He goes out and parties. Yeah, he's nuts. So see him live cool. soon because he's going to die young. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So I look like Jeremy Piven or Bert Kreischer. Uh, Bartuzo, who does Steven look like other than that white nationalist guy? <laughs> Which I don't look I... like. <laughs> no. Ah. Besides, actually, Richard Spencer is kind of handsome. So if you said I looked like him, it wouldn't be like the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> he is kind of handsome. I, I get a little maybe James Carville. I'm just that was a joke. <laughs> Who's James you know, Carville? James... Oh, the oh, the he's bald-headed that, uh, Democratic, Democratic strategist, Southern. Like he's from Louisiana, so he's got like that Southern. Mm. Yeah, I just insulted you, dude. <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. Can you share the screen real quick and show Steven? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> he has he has like the thin eyes that I've got for sure. You look more like this bitch than you do James Carville. Yeah, I agree. Steven, I, you don't really look like anybody, dude. Thank I've never God. seen someone I've never seen someone and been like, that guy looks like Steven. Like I get a lot of buck tooth doppelgangers because my teeth are huge. So <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, dude. But the like fuck? you know. <laughs> <laughs> but Anybody yeah, that's skinny thing, with dude. black hair and buck teeth. That's who yeah. Ryan looks I feel, like. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we are going to get comments on this video more than most of our other videos. That's just people saying we look like the worst fucking people in the face of the earth. Like, <laughs> just Google like ugliest person you've ever found. Find somebody that's like with a beard and you're just like, eh, this is kind of Dan. Find somebody with like bigger teeth. Eh, it's kind of Ryan. Find somebody who looks fucking weird. Uh, this guy's Steve. Like... <laughs> <laughs> my mom What's... told me she's, you'll grow into those buck teeth ryan i said okay mom i don't know if i have <laughs> you didn't <laughs> so, like, people with big teeth age better i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> what she was she gonna say was she kid. gonna be like you know what you might as well just off yourself as a fifth grader okay because it's not good <laughs> there was a guy who did like in my grade who did the chipmunk thing i just i punched him right in the face i punched him right in the face in like fifth or sixth grade i mean Got my ass kicked, then you know, pushed down and punched a little bit. But I, I was always fucking draw, you know. I'll, I'll I'll swing at you, make fun of my teeth, you know. Okay. Boom, right in the face. Right. You know, out of the <laughs> there have been literally hundreds of things I've made fun of you about. Never, never once, <laughs> never once has it even crossed my mind to make fun of your teeth. Yeah, there's there's like so much, <laughs> there's so many better things to make fun of you about. That I think hurt more than make fun of, making fun of your teeth. Also, right? I like, just I don't even think your teeth are big. <laughs> I don't know. Like I the think way you're smiling was, right now, yes. Um, but that's your smile, younger, not even your teeth. I, I think I gotta yeah. give you some pictures of when I was like when my teeth grew in when I was before braces, especially where they're you know, I looked like I was from Mississippi. It was bad. Um, so if you would have seen me then, you probably would have been like, "Look at this redneck." Take, take that, but, all people who listen from mississippi to the podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right guys what do you say we uh go ahead and rate this uh high proof bourbon let's do it you like that idea 
Oh, I love that idea. Yeah. I wish we would have thought of it all these episodes ago. I tried like 20 minutes ago to get us. Like, did you hear me say, hey, what do you say we go ahead and rate? And Ryan interrupted me with a boring ass, long fucking story that we can't even use the audio from because it makes him look like a racist son of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Now you got to cancel that out. <laughs> what a no, what a no, racial no. soapbox Ryan went on for just <laughs> twenty straight minutes. I mean, he he talked. Tra- what got, race thumb, didn't he believe? I got a thumbs up in my corner of my screen. Do you see that? <laughs> I mean, what race did he not belittle in that twenty minutes? Yeah, it was actually masterful. I mean, it was impressive to say the least. He, I'll so say let's... he swayed me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. (laughs) right for the third fucking time can we rate this bourbon i'd love to can we just end this fucking night 8.1 can i rate steven shirt real quick 8.1 okay yeah i rate steven shirt yeah i love that shirt dude that's a 9.3 shirt right here dude i just want to say that all right but back to your rating i love that shirt dude so 8.1 do you want to justify it or no uh, yeah, I'll justify it real quick. I'll say that I think last week, Dan, when we were talking about Sweetheart of the Rodeo, you said at one point that you couldn't imagine anybody not liking it. Mm-hmm. And I want to say that I do not think that that's true for Pinhook, um, at least as Pinhook. Um, and I think that it's it's a divisive one. I think that some people are not going to like something that's this hot, this high proof, and it definitely hits absolutely that proof, if not more. It is a spicy one. But I also think that, like we've talked about with some before, it's a little complex. I would not find myself drinking this every night, not just because of the proof, but because of how many flavors and how many notes it has to it. There's plenty of stuff in this that is not what you necessarily typically find in bourbon or you'll typically like if you like bourbon. It's a little harder to recommend for multiple reasons. And I also wouldn't have it very much. It's, uh, it's, it's a sipper. And it's something that if you want to sit there and you really want to pay attention to the notes and that kind of thing, it's that kind of drink. Uh, It's, it's a bourbon for a bourbon podcast kind of thing. I don't know that's a bourbon for the every man and it's more of a, a tasting thing. So for that reason, I think it's very solid. I think it's good, but I can only give it an 8.1 and no higher because of that. Well, let's be clear. 8.1 on our show is a very high rating. Yes. Okay. So uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but I think it's really important to mention now that this is a $45 bottle. Okay. So it's a $45 bottle that you just gave an 8.1, which is a really high score. And I would rival different notes and everything, but I would rival with Stag Jr. if you like high proof stuff. And that's saying a lot. And that's I'm going to I'm just going to jump ahead of Ryan because I don't give a shit what he said. He thinks I'm going with an 8.3 um, for much of the same reason that you just mentioned, Stephen. Um, I'm going with an 8.3 because I think that for forty five dollars, if you like Stag Jr., which will very soon be just Stag. I wrote our ratings down. I already rated mine. 8.3? Yeah. Well, sorry, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but no, it, it it's it is a really good pour. Um Steven, I think you're right that I could see people disliking it. I could see people saying, wow, that kind of punches you in the face. But with that punching in the face you're also getting a whole lot of complexity. You're getting some really great flavors. I don't think that the alcohol or the proof is overwhelming. I think you notice it. I think you recognize that you're getting a high proof, but this is a a true situation where the high proof does directly equate to a high flavor complexity and a high flavor profile. You're getting all of that together. So if you like bourbon and you like strong flavors, then go for this. 
it's a bottle that is easy to find like in this area okay in in the st louis metro area in the chicago area i would guess you can walk into any liquor store and grab this off the shelf and you could grab six bottles if you wanted to and i do think although it doesn't share the exact same profiles if you like stag jr you're gonna like this and your chances of buying a bottle of stag jr or six bottles of stag jr are zero they are absolutely zero so give this a try you'll like it yeah i i remember getting utterly punched in the face by stag jr and i love i loved it it was good but th- for me this was easier to drink i love the notes they were sweeter um i got a and i know like it's basic but the more i drank it and smelled it the more it was like just maple syrup and you mentioned dan that it just stuck around the glass yep it was like it was like drinking like log cabin syrup that's a lot better and then getting punched in the face after which is a compliment um from me it was really good i i would take this over stag i mean i i, I had a couple bottles of stag junior last year and it was good but comparison I, w- I would take this hands down over it my first sip i was like that's a lot it was it was hard to drink and i didn't think i was going to like it but you asked steven early on like oh what, what do you think of it and steven's like i can't really say right now because there's so much complexities and there really are and i really want to try their high proof rye because i'm hoping because some of the one, you know, really good rise we have, and I never thought they would be so decadent. I'm hoping maybe their high proof rye would have some of those decadent notes that I really like. So piggybacking off of Dan, as you guys, if you watched, you saw first sip or probably second or third sip I had, I was like, this is an 8.3. Steven said 8.1. I honestly thought Dan, you'd be like an 8.2, 8.3, 8.4. So we're all in the same wheelhouse. And that's a great score. This is a real high proof bourbon. And some of those have the opportunity of just being a kick in the face bourbon. And this is not that. So if you see this on the shelf, go ahead and buy it. And the wax is cool. And it's a cool color. well i got a friend who um got really pissed off at us one time like legitimately got pissed off at us no 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 no. i i have a friend who got legitimately pissed at at like some of my other friends, like our friend okay. group, because we said he looked like Hillary Swank in <laughs> passing. <laughs> oh man, that's insulting. And and it's and I think it cut deep because it's really true. 